Let's optimize. Watch this tutorial to learn how to make your breast ultrasound image shine. The first ultrasound control that I adjust when doing a breast ultrasound is frequency. Frequency is the number of sound wave cycles that happen in one second, and this affects image resolution and penetration. Ideally, in the breast, the frequency should be set to the highest frequency that allows you to penetrate all the way through the entire breast tissue and down to the chest wall. When frequency is set too high, you have a high image resolution, but a lack of penetration, and this can mean that you can miss masses that are deep in the breast near the chest wall. When your frequency is set too low, you have good penetration throughout the breast tissue, but you have really low image resolution. This means that subtle and small findings in the breast tissue will not be visualized. In the first image, the frequency is set too high. This means that there's high resolution in the tissue, but there's a lack of penetration down, down deep in the breast to the chest wall. In the second image, the frequency is set too low. This means means there's great penetration all the way down to the chest wall, but it's a low resolution image. You can see the image is much grainier. On image three, the frequency is set correctly. This gives us both high resolution and good penetration all the way down through to the chest wall in the breast. The next ultrasound control that I adjust is the depth. And depth is how deeply the ultrasound waves can penetrate into the tissue. Ideally in the breast, the depth should be adjusted so that the pectoralis muscle is clearly visualized in the far field and is located at least three quarters of the way down the image. When you have insufficient depth, meaning the depth is too shallow, there's an inability to visualize the chest wall structures or interrogate the deeper breast tissues for pathology. When there's too much depth, the structures and tissues on the ultrasound image are not well visualized because they're too far away. The image is too small and crammed into the near field to really be able to see the breast tissue. The greater the depth, the harder it is for the sound waves to penetrate through the tissue. Attenuation increases with increasing depth. In the first image, the depth is too shallow. You cannot visualize the deep breast tissue or the pectoralis muscle. In the next image, the depth is too deep. The breast Breast tissue is hard to visualize because it's so far away and small, and it's easy to miss subtle or small findings in the breast tissue. In the last image, the depth is set correctly. You can visualize both the deep breast tissue and the pectoralis muscle. Another essential ultrasound control to adjust is the focal zones. A focus is the narrowest part of the ultrasound beam and the area of the highest resolution. Focal zones are the area of the ultrasound beam immediately above and below the focus. In this area, area, the beam is still narrow and resolution is still high in this zone. In the breast, multiple foci should be used for maximum tissue resolution at all depths. This slows down the frame rate, but in standard breast imaging, frame rate is not as important. The lowest focus should be at the deep edge of the breast tissue or at the pectoralis muscle. When only a single focus is used in breast imaging, the image resolution is only high in the area of the focal zone. The rest of the image is deep decreased in resolution, and important pathology in the breast can be missed. When a single focus is used and it's placed too high on the image, then the tissue in the lower portion of the breast will have decreased resolution and pathology can be missed. So ideally, you want to use multiple foci and spread them out throughout the breast tissue for maximum resolution at all depths. In the first image, only a single focus is used, which means only one section of the image has high resolution. In the next image, the single focus is improperly placed. It's too high in the image, which means there's a loss of resolution throughout most of the tissue, and the deeper breast tissue is not visualized at all. In the last image, the foci are correctly placed. There's multiple foci, and the lowest foci is at the level of the pectoralis muscle. There's three primary brightness controls on an ultrasound machine. Gain, TGC, and output power. The gain control increases or decreases image brightness by amplifying signals that have already returned to the ultrasound machine from the transducer. You cannot change the strength of the pulse 
sent out into the tissue with the gain control. In the breast, the gain control should be set so that the fat in the breast is a medium gray color. When the gain is set too high, the structures and tissues of the breast are too bright, there's an inability to distinguish tissues and structures from each other, and pathology cannot be visualized. When the gain control is set too low, the structures and the tissues of the breast are too dark. There's a loss of image detail, and you cannot visualize pathology or distinguish tissues and structures from one another. In the first image, the gain is set too low. The breast tissue is too dark, and you cannot delineate structures or pathology. In the next image, the gain control is set too high. The breast tissues are too bright. You cannot distinguish the structures or the layers of the breast tissue or visualize pathology in the breast. In the next image, the correct gain setting is used. The fat in the breast is set to a medium gray color and the structures and the tissues and pathology in the breast are well visualized. Our next brightness control is called TGC or time gain compensation. TGC changes the brightness level at different depths in the tissue. Each of the TGC knobs can be adjusted separately from one another to adjust the brightness at that specific depth in the tissue. TGC boost signals already return to the ultrasound machine, so it does not affect the strength of the pulse that's sent into the body. TGC compensates for attenuation, which is the loss of sound wave strength as it travels further and further into the tissue. In the breast, the TGC should be set so that the image displays equal brightness at all depths, and structures and layers maintain their proper echogenicities. If the TGC level is too low in an area, the image will be too dark in that region, there will be a loss of image detail, and pathology can be missed. If the TGC level is set too high in an area, the image will be too bright in that region, and you cannot delineate the normal structures and layers of the breast, and it will be easy to miss pathology. In the first image, the TGC in the near field is set too dark. This means the anterior portion of the image is too dark and you cannot make out the structures of the breast or visualize pathology. In the next image, the TGC in the far field is set too dark. This means that the posterior portion of the image is too dark in color and you cannot make out structures in the breast and it would be easy to miss pathology in this region. In the last image, the correct TGC settings are applied. This means that there's equal brightness levels from the near field to the far field in the image. Our third brightness control is output power. Output power increases or decreases brightness levels by changing the strength of the sound pulse that's sent into the body. In the breast, the output power should be adjusted so that the lowest level that produces a diagnostic image is used. When the output power is too high, there's a higher risk to the patient, as this is sending a stronger pulse into the body. This also makes the image too bright. When the output power is too low, there's an insufficient ability to penetrate through the dense breast tissue, making the image too dark. It's important when operating an ultrasound machine to abide by the ultrasound safety principle of Alera, as low as reasonably achievable. Always adjust the ultrasound system controls with the safety of the patient in mind. The lowest output power that produces a diagnostic image should always be used. In the first image, the lowest output power level is used. When the output power is set too low, it doesn't fully penetrate through the dense breast tissue. In the next image, the output power level is turned up to a medium level. In this image, the output power is still set too low to penetrate fully through the dense breast tissue. In the last image, the correct output power has been achieved. The output power is high enough in this image set at 90% to penetrate fully through the tissue, and it's also at the lowest dose possible to get a diagnostic image. Most ultrasound machines nowadays for breast imaging can safely operate at 100% power level. When adjusting brightness controls, the most important thing to remember is to always adjust output power as a last resort. The first controls that should be manipulated are always gain and TGC for brightness before output power is adjusted. When optimizing a breast ultrasound image, one of the most important factors that's often overlooked, especially by new sonographers, is the amount of transducer pressure being applied.
diet, new sonographers tend to barely push down with a transducer, meaning that they have to go to, through a lot more work to get their images optimized. When firm transducer pressure is applied, the image is crisp, meaning it's got a good resolution, and it also eliminates artifactual shadowing in the breast, known as Cooper's ligament shadowing. Unless the exam is slightly uncomfortable for the patient, it's likely that you're not using adequate transducer pressure in order to get a high quality diagnostic image. In the first image, insufficient transducer pressure is being applied. Since the pressure is too light, the image quality is low. Also, you can see lots of Cooper's ligament shadowing throughout the image. In the next image, the correct transducer pressure is being applied. The pressure is firm enough to produce a crisp, high resolution image and also eliminate Cooper's ligament shadowing. One of the most important things I tell new sonographers is don't be afraid to push. That patient is there to get a high quality diagnostic study and you want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to get the best images. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and stay tuned for our next video on Wednesday morning.